previously on the lineage of Moonreach. So we went back to Moonreach, and holy shit, Tomar found this locket. I think my mom's picture is inside. We also found this number combination in the locket, and Tomar and I went back to his father's workshop, and we found a diary there. I think it might belong to my mom, but it's tough to say. And no. holy fuck, the barrier is down. <laughs> The D20 Syndicate presents The Lineage of Moonreach. Welcome back to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. Whee! Oh! That's right, this is a, a, a weekly Dungeons and Dragons podcast. I am your host and DM Seth, and around the table we have our players. I'm t -t 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 Thomas, and I play t -t 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 Thomas. I'm Elijah, and I play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Billy, and I play Willem. I'm Lindsay, and I play Penwin. And I'm Michaela, and I play Gorble. That's right. Each week we record it, and we release it for your listening pleasure here on the vast annals of the interwebs um, you can find this podcast <laughs> Ew, <anal>? it's anal. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can find this podcast anywhere so if you're listening with a friend and you don't know where to get it uh, you can go to our website and you can uh, peep the details below our uh, anywhere you're looking and listening and uh, you can don't look at me like that <laughs> I was just wishing you said peep the deets right <laughs> yeah Peep you can the peep. Deets. You can peep the deets below, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can uh, like, subscribe. Please share, uh, and definitely check out our Patreon. Um, that's uh, that's something that keeps us going. So if you guys would like to contribute, and you can, there's a bunch of different tiered options you can help contribute to the podcast. Even. And you get sweet shit out of it. You so get sweet many shit. Sweet um, and uh, you can get to interact with us on our Discord server. You can help us come up with a campfire question. There's a lot of cool shit you can do. So what's uh, the URL for that stuff? That's <laughs> patreoncom slash d20 underscore syndicate so check that out um donate or you know don't but uh we would appreciate it if you did <laughs> just look at it also leave reviews check out all of our social media pages and uh just interact with us we love it i do have a review speaking of oh, all right let's do a this, review this one comes straight from podbean which i didn't know you could leave reviews through there but man leave them wherever you like yeah um, fucking little <laughs> breadcrumb trail <laughs> nail it up to a cork board luckily this gentleman <laughs> messaged me separately from podbean because I wouldn't have known there was a review there. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, this is from Austin B1024. IDK, if you guys check your comments on Podbean, but I binged all we the way don't. to here. Can I finish, please? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought this could be like a collaborative. Interactive. This isn't a conversation. I'm reading. Oh, sorry, Austin. <laughs> Everyone, shut up. <laughs> but I binged all the way to here the other day, and he's, he's he was on episode five at the time. Oh. And didn't have a chance to comment sooner. I am loving this. You guys are super entertaining, and the story is absolutely wonderful. I have a good deal of time at work to listen to podcasts and was hunting for my next real play, and I'm hooked. Please keep doing what you're doing. I can't wait to get caught up. Nice. nice. Well, thank you, Austin. Nice. Austin. Thanks, Austin. Austin. That was uh, that was that was good. I like I like knowing that people just like randomly find us and then binge the shit out of us. Yeah, that's that's a testament to our. We're bingeable. Yeah, we're bingeable. <laughs> if you can if you can that's listen if you can listen to episode one through five straight, then yeah, yeah you've you've got some dedication because those yeah. first couple episodes are long really long, <laughs> meaty, so meaty. But definitely check out our first episodes and keep going. I mean, I know. <laughs> what is that from? The soup. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's like I know this. So meaty. And I don't know why we say this every episode. Like, well, not every episode, but we're like, check out our first episode. You know? Yeah. Like, check you know. out our first episode. If you're starting here, once again, you have fucked up. So go back. <laughs> watch. Listen to Gunky Evil. Watch it on YouTube. Stare at that unmoving <laughs> symbol on the YouTube <laughs> video and check it out because there's some stuff, some cool shit in there. And uh, otherwise, you know, do your thing. Until you get to one hour, 37 minutes, and 42 seconds into that episode, and it moves a little bit. It twitches. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> you'll miss it if, you, if you're not paying attention. All right, so let's do our around the campfire question. I'm going to do a two-parter today, Ooh. just because I feel like it's both of them will be short enough, hopefully, goddamn. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, so today's around the campfire question, the first part is, other barring wolves... What animal do you feel would best represent your character's personality and lifestyle? We will start with Willem. 
Weasel. <laughs> I was actually debating between ferret and fox. Hmm. And why do you why do you say that? Uh, resourceful, uh, quick little fuckers. Um, just do what they got to do to survive. Kill to survive. Nice. Um, Tomar. Probably a bull. Cause okay. I charge in. Uh, with most problems, I go head first in. <laughs> Literally. <so. Yeah. laughs> um, Pinwin. So I would be these creatures that are in Shadeholm called gliders. Okay. Which are flying squirrels. They're basically flying squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> they're sugar gliders. And but they're really big. <laughs> yeah. So they're wombats kind of? <laughs> well, they're, they're like medium creatures. Yeah. They're, they're invented, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're super cute. And they are always on an adventure and always on a mission and always keep them busy. And they just jump right in and then they fly. And then, yeah, that's just like me. I jump right in and then I fly. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe not literally, but. Okay, Gorble. I think that I would be some kind of large cat, like maybe a mm. cheetah. Or a puma. Mm. <laughs> very, very fast on my feet. A um, little aggressive. And very picky about my appearance. <laughs> okay. Um, very nice. And her stag. Um. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry, your voice. <laughs> you coming in with your voice. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, well, maybe something like a cow. <laughs> a cow? Yeah. Just grazing. When I'm not. Cut. When I'm not adventuring. Um, you like to be milked? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've just Don't always we looked all? at the noble cow and just feel this connection there. No. Um, when I'm not adventuring, I'm usually pretty lethargic and just kind of hang out and stand around and eat grass <laughs> in the pastures. So, you know, that's probably what I would be. Nice. Yeah. Both of the dwarves rocking the bovine ungulates. <laughs> rocking the bovine ungulates. <laughs> Div's new band name. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, kind kind of in a similar vein, but not exactly. Um, maybe this could be interesting. Um, what decision would the party have to make in order for your character con to consider splitting away from the group? What could the party do that would be a deal breaker, basically, that you would separate from them? I'll start with uh, you, Herstag. Um, well, at one point, I had, I must admit I was sort of considering leaving that moment in the, the church when we first met um, <laughs> and Tomar just sliced the whole townspeople in half. Um, so I guess killing innocent people. Um, and... I guess if they set the Midland Wilds on fire, that would suck. <laughs> and I would um, have my vengeance and then go my own way. Okay, Gorble. What could the party do that would cause you to splinter? I don't want them to know this because I want to keep them on their toes a little bit, but there's very little they could do that would make me <laughs> split Aww. off. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. But maybe if they, like, I don't know, killed Jennifer or something, or, <laughs> like, I guess some something really fucked up towards me. I don't know. I wouldn't leave them. These people are my family. Okay. Bad question. <laughs> <laughs> a pin one. If this was a test, I passed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave the party if they killed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, are you sure? It's the only way we're getting rid of um, Is there I mean, a situation where you'd understand our motives for killing you? Like, oh, I right. feel like you'd still... <laughs> that's my personal With my take. dying words, I'd be like, I still love you. <laughs> we're fucking Caesaring her. Yeah. And she's just like, I get it. I, I guess I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how you feel that way. <laughs> not, not happy with the execution. Oh, oh, <laughs> ow. That one hurt. Um... Yeah, no, that and, um, I mean, 
I guess if we were legitimately baddies, then I'd be <laughs> tempted to not, but we're not full on baddies, so I don't think it's an issue. It's a, it's a gray world you guys live in. Yeah, so. we're gray. It's fine. Willem. Short of just murdering innocent babies, I don't think there's really anything that <laughs> we did these, almost murder an innocent baby. <laughs> <laughs> these assholes could do. I shot um, a kid. Like Gorbel said, uh, this is family. This is forever. Tomar, I feel like you'll have a hot take. <laughs> no, not really. Like we're all kind of on the same page. Um, I feel like if there was something like that then it would have been me that did the thing that, <laughs> that yeah. everyone was like, whoa, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So they've been surprisingly accepting of the things that I've risked and sacrificed throughout our adventures. So it would be wrong of me not to do the same to them. All right. It was good. Okay, well, sure. Or if they, like, fart a lot while we're, like, sleeping or whatever, and they're out. <laughs> like, I just can't stand it. Um, all right. That was really sweet. Yeah. So, basically, uh, everybody Aww. but her stay. <laughs> Don't burn down the middle wilds, guys. Mm-mm. Just this close. <laughs> At all times. <laughs> It's like um, waiting for us to do it. Like, kind of, there's a part of him that wants us to do it. Just I so wish you would. I will whirl with you. <laughs> I don't even know how I'll react. I'm scared of myself, honestly. <laughs> okay, so you guys have now noticed that the barrier has receded. It's disappeared. Tomar and Gorbel, you emerge from Gorm's shop, and you see Herstag, Pinwin, Willem, and Fennec and the Chaos Company standing with and Zyko standing outside in the streets staring up at the sky as the barrier has slid down and now you guys can hear the sounds of hundreds of angry voices as they sound like they're storming the city. Well, is it just Fennec of their people? Yeah, you don't see because Cork, remember he took so you guys could be alone with Fennec. He took everybody off. Did he say where he was taking them? No, he's, he's just down the street. Yeah, they're he's they, still in sight, right? He's not like, in sight. Well, I know now. they sent some of them off to patrol, like he had said that. Mm-hmm. But he wanted uh, to give you guys privacy because you asked so that you could talk to Fennec. But he used patrolling as a uh, means oh, for yeah. that to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. How far away are they? You we can't see them right now. You're in the <laughs> town Hero. square. I That's take fine. it these are not allies. Uh, they sound angry. Maybe they're just protesting. <laughs> we know there are soldiers outside the town. Yeah. Do we have any idea how far, um, how far away the outskirts were where they the soldiers were? Uh, they were roughly a mile outside. So they have a mile until they get. Or like I think it was a, a half mile, yeah, something like that. Um, they were just outside of the barrier, and the barrier was just, like, I think I said the barrier was a half mile outside the circumference of the city, so, or the town. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are now in the center of the town square. What do you want to do? Um, this all seems a bit familiar. Fight or flee. Guys, there are not very many of us. Flee. Yeah. We need to, no, we need to warn the people here. Uh, let's go back to the tavern and see if anyone is still there that we could get word to the other people. For the record, I meant, like, flee with the people here, <laughs> not, like, leaving them. All right. All right. So you yeah. guys Clear. you guys going to head towards the tavern? <laughs> yes. Okay, you guys do see, um, as you guys run off, Fennec just is kind of staring up at the sky. He doesn't move. Um, he seems very concentrated on what's going on there. I um, take his hand. He, he looks at you. Bring him with us. He doesn't give a shit about the lock-in anymore? He doesn't seem to. What the heck? Um... He he goes with you. It seems like he's it kind of knocks him out of his reverie, and he just kind of you pull his hand, and then he kind of pulls it back, and he follows you guys. Um, and you guys run towards the tavern. As you do, uh, you can see in the street, you can see Cork and a few of the others uh, staring up and uh, like trying to like kind of bewildered, trying to figure out what exactly is going on. They can hear it. You can hear Cork is telling them that they need to uh, go to the uh, go to the barriers outside of the city 
and, to defend it. Get ready for a battle. No, don't do that. Cork, get your men and then come with us. We, we, we've got to defend the city. What are you talking we about? We just many? talked to you about not defending the city. That was when it with the barrier was up. How many we people need to get do you out have? Of here. We, I, we've got 30, maybe? Oh, there no. are way more people coming. You cannot hold them off. There's no reason for you to send your men out there. <sighs> Um, You'll be sending them to their deaths. Uh, <laughs> Just get your men. Fine, fine. Um, <laughs> and he nods to uh, one of the, the youths, and uh, the guy pulls a horn out. And... <laughs> and then Cork says, that's, a, that's our, our sign to, to come back, so to, to retreat. So they should they should be coming here soon. Um, uh, uh, what's what do we do then? Or how are we? How do we get out of this? Do you know the tunnel? The the, the tunnel. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. I think you're, it's next to Gorm's shop. Yeah. The party tunnel. The p- party tunnel. Yeah. We had a lot of fun back in the day, but we don't have time to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I wasn't there. You invited this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I shoot. Cork a look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what party tunnel that Gorbel loved <laughs> didn't love? Dude, you're the worst at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after just a few moments, you can see some of the, the uh, denizens of the town coming and running you guys' direction, and they all kind of gather around you guys. Is this everyone? Uh, it It's hard to tell. I'm not asking you. I'm oh. asking Cork. Cork uh, looks around. Um, it, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see... Uh, uh, flail and I don't see cudgel. <laughs> um, that's it. They're they're uh, they're Lamp they were here yet. yeah they were looking uh, around the perimeter. Um, I, I can I can try to go find them, and he like dashes off. All right, you all come with us. We'll get them into the tunnels for now, and then we'll wait outside for Cork to get there. At that moment, you guys hear off in the distance. <laughs> Shit. And as you look up, roughly a mile away, you can see a dragon approaching. Uh-huh. What's the weather like? The weather looks like it's about to start raining. <laughs> Probably What's cloudy. the forecast for the next few days? Is, is it really cloudy? Yes, it's, it's very heavily overcast. It, lo- it looks like it's threatening to rain. It's British as fuck. I'm going to begin casting Control Weather. Okay. Not Herstag. the BAM card version. <laughs> yeah. No, actual Herstag uh, starts, his <clears throat> eyes uh, kind of fade into the green light, and his body starts to glow with this green hue. And as we're moving, I'm going to, you know, keep making my hand motions or whatever to cast it, and it takes 10 minutes to cast. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so you guys run back to the shop, mm-hmm. or the uh, the tunnel, Mort's Port Shorp, and... Uh, <laughs> We're going to wait outside the shop, basically, and let people go behind us into the tunnel. All right. um, Give me a perception check, everyone. Question mark? (laughs) 19? 23. Oh, for God's sake. Even if I roll a 1, I get 18. (laughs) Jesus. 13. 25. 18. Okay. um, Everybody but Gorbel, (laughs) you you can see... There's something dangling from the dragon. Some large shape. It looks to be like some sort of m- mechanism. It's got a big circular swirl in it and a glowing center stone. It's hanging from a chain on its feet. Uh, give me... Like a bomb? No, it looks like a some weird contraption, like thin, almost like a. Uh, I don't even know how to. A pane s- of glass. No, it's made. Of, it looks like it's made of metal. Okay. It's a big circular swirl, mm-hmm. and it, in the center of the swirl is a glowing purple stone, and f- down looks like something that might be planted into the ground, but it looks tall. It looks like maybe it's about twenty feet tall. He just has a really ornate anklet. Pretty much, <laughs> but it's hanging from a chain below him, as if being transported. And this dragon you now see is, it's got green scales. By contraption, you don't mean like... Give me a... Like hist- Prince uh, Everybody contraption. but Herstag, give me a history check. Or, sorry, Willem, not you either. Oh, 
Oh no. Damn. Seven. Fourteen. Where's Lewin when you need her? Being a god. No, she wouldn't be. Ten. Ten. Um, so Tomar, that thing looks sort of familiar. You can't quite place it, but you don't think you've seen something like this in person. But it definitely doesn't look good. How big is the thing it's carrying? It's like 20 feet tall. Tall, yeah, but like, is it narrow? Is oh, it's it- it's probably five feet wide. Guys, I'm going to cast Disintegrate on this fucking dragon. Okay. It's still a little ways off. I also don't know if it'll outright kill it anyway. It probably has and more than... Do we want to break and or have it drop what it's carrying? Mine. <laughs> if there's well, people still in the town, then we need to try and make sure they get out before we do anything. Yeah. Be Are we not point. going to try to get out too? Not until everyone else does. <sighs> Well, we're standing their ground waiting for cork, flail, and cudgel. And okay. Lamp, so. the, and biscuit. <laughs> the dragon gets closer and closer, and when it's roughly maybe a quarter mile outside of the perimeter of the town, it's still quite a few uh, hundred feet in the air. It, it's, it changes its uh, speed and basically drops into like a float, so it's just staying in one spot. <laughs> It kind of lets out this really loud, terrifying scream. And then you see the glowing ember, or the glowing gem inside this uh, mechanism. It starts getting brighter and brighter. And you hear like a... Even far off. So nearby, you know it's got to be super loud. That doesn't look good. Nope. And then... A beam of magical looking energy shoots off a purple beam and strikes one section of the town and the beam disappears it disperses after just a moment but an entire section of Moonreach just is this like what happened at Starhost yes how long did it take the dragon to get where it is right now uh not very long was it 10 minutes no (laughs) it was much quicker than 10 minutes 10 seconds it was like closer to maybe 2 minutes does this dragon count as a beast that I could speak with animals with? Dragons are not beasts. They're sentient. Okay. They're their own monsters. Um, I figured the So the, the gem after that goes dark, but then you can see that it's slowly starting to light back up. I wonder if we could disable that. How? Or we disintegrate that. Oh, magic. <laughs> I'd have to be within 60 feet. Yeah. Um, well, he seems like more of a direct threat to long range things like buildings and stuff. And now you can guys you guys can hear Us. that the soldiers seem to have cleared the distance uh, to the city and you can hear them now much closer inside maybe even inside the town itself. You still have seen no sign of Cork and the others. We need to uh... We need some kind of cover. Well, we well, have, that's what I'm trying to work on right now. We have buildings here, but we need to we need to accept that this is an obstacle, and we're going to be facing way worse things than this, but we can't let this do things to other towns. Like, well, if this is a power that they have at the ready, then we need to stop it. I agree. Okay, well, we need a plan, like, now. Well, we've seen what it does to buildings, so taking cover in the buildings might not be the best of ideas. Yeah, it's just a smoking maybe, crater. We Correct. should maybe spread out, form a perimeter under and around the dragon to distract so that it, it we aren't all in one uh, place, one, like, just bunched up, spread out, and form a perimeter around it so that we keep it busy and distracted while Herstag finishes casting his spell. Um, Herstag, Pinwin, and me, we will go off. Garble, Willem, Zyko, you go another way down the town, and then we'll converge, like, close to nearby under the dragon. Should we do our talkie thing before we go? Probably. Oh, you guys, I am way low on spells. If we're splitting up, we do need to know if somebody is 
injured or Hey, who has the who has the talkie and the listening? Herstag might have one of them. Wait, Willem, do you have one of those? The talkie or the hearing? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, you guys would uh if if you guys look through your belongings, you'd find both both sides of it. All right. Uh, can't remember who exactly has it. Yeah, it doesn't I matter. Well, together it. we find them. Yeah. Okay, who wants to be talky? Who's going to have eyes on? Here, you take the talky. Okay. I'll take the hearing. All right, so he puts the earring in, and you put the brooch on. And uh, you guys are going to go back down into the uh, into the town? Yep. Yep. Okay. You guys be careful. Keep an eye out for a tree. Maybe we can make a quick escape. And Vocha, well, Vocha kind of looks. What do you guys want us to do? Gorble, Zyko, <laughs> and I will head right, and we'll spread out a perimeter on the right side of the dragon. You guys will head left. Uh, Vocha and Chaos Company, you guys find another vantage point uh, away from us to where you could distract it if it starts raining down shit on one of our groups. Or some of you could hang back here and guard the entrance to the tunnel in case uh, Cork and his friends come back. <laughs> Oh, did we not All have right. some of them All right. with us um, already? Mm-mm. All right. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. They're going uh, yeah. in the tunnel. Yeah, the, the most of them have gone in, inside um, of the, or you guys were converging outside, but there's, you're still waiting on Cork, Flail, and Cudgel. And, um, oh, yeah, so there's people in the tunnel, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That can greet them when Cork and them get there, right? I just wanted them to go down the tunnel and out of the city. Like, I, I wasn't like, hang out here. Oh, sure. Okay. But, so, I mean, you would, have, you, would have, guys. you would have sent them to get out of the city through the yeah. tunnel? Okay, so that's where they would be. If you told them to do that, then that's where they would be going. Okay. Um, Vocha kind of looks around. Well, if there's one thing we're good at, it's uh, definitely causing a d- bit of a distraction. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, Herc, you want to you wanna stand guard here and let them know uh, if, uh, if they're going to... Uh, if, if, if they come back, you just you just let them know to go through the tunnel. You guys, I think that thing takes a while to power up. Do you remember how it how it had to take breaks when it? Where was that place where it was Star attacking? Host. Mm-hmm. In Star House. In Star Host, how it took forever for it to power back up before it made another attack. Yeah, I feel like we have an opportunity now. Well, let's fucking shag ass that way. Let's go. There right. also might be soldiers that we have to fight along the way. So be it. What else is new? <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Sorry, busy. You're not asking. on my team. Go away. <laughs> okay, so Willem, Zyko, and Gorbel, you guys run off to the right, kind of skirting around the outside, outskirts of the, the town. Tomar, Herstag, and Pinwin, you guys skirt off to the left. And you guys watch as uh, very, very deftly Vocha kind of looks looks around and he finds a couple of uh barrels and he just kind of leaps up on it grabs onto a roof of one of the buildings and then hops up pulling both of his hand crossbows out and you watch as lance his wings come out <laughs> and he floats up on the other side of the street uh onto a roof and it looks like he's he's got some like magical energy kind of pouring out of his hands at the moment fuck yes mm. all right so Tomar, Have I finished casting my spell? No, it's only been about five minutes. Oh my god. So Tomar, Pinwin, <laughs> and Herstag, you guys will go with you guys first. You guys are running off to the left. You're kind of hopping through yards and stuff like that and, and kind of coming around the, the left-hand outskirts. And give me one second to look at the map. <laughs> and actually, I'll provide the map. All right, so... We've got two markers there. The left-hand one is going to be Tomas's, Tomar's group. The right-hand one is going to be Gorbel's group. And uh, so you you guys are moving your way through. Um, I might have to have you uh, move it. Um, this is the village of Moonreach. And uh, so, yeah, you guys are on your way through on the left-hand side there. The black marker is you guys. And uh, you guys will are coming up on a cluster of trees. Uh, it's a small little park area. There are trees. There are very small little pines. Yes. You're not in this group. <laughs> <laughs> this is, get out of our group. It's like the only well, yeah. type of tree inside. Yeah, her egg is in this group. Yes. This is your group. Oh. Yeah. I thought, I'm just having you move it. I thought you just said the group with Gorbel is the black screw. He no. said Tomas's. I mean Tomar's group yeah. is the black one. Yeah. God damn it. Sorry. 
Might Don't apologize. Confusing. You said the exact thing. Okay. No, you said right and left, I thought. Yeah, I we're said right and left. left. You yeah. guys were right. Okay, yes. You do realize that's, that's different for me. Yeah. And, yeah. So, Tomar's is group is the black with. one. You guys are the silver one. Cool. Okay. So... You guys are, yeah, making your way down the roads. You see the cluster of trees off to the right, the little, it's like little young pines. They look like they've been recently or within the last year or two planted, so they're not very well grown. Um, but yeah, you guys are making your way down this this pathway towards the town square. Um, you guys see a lot of different buildings. You can see uh, kind of where you guys had your last stand when you were kids uh, near the mayor's uh, area. Um, but you don't see any soldiers, you don't see any townsfolk, but you can see that dragon off in the distance, which is basically where Billy is right now. What part of the city did it shoot? Uh, it shot over very near where you guys are. So there's that big smoking crater, like maybe 200 feet ahead of you guys. Um, which group is Smoochie in again? Uh, oh shit. Smoochie, you never said, um, let's say just to separate, he'll be in the group with Gorbel. Okay. That way you're not in the same group there. Um, okay, so you guys um, keep heading on down, and you make it to the um, the town square, and now you guys can hear um, a lot more voices and clattering. And it sounds like somebody's fighting, um, and up ahead, you can actually see that Cork and one other person are like running away from a group of soldiers, and they're throwing Moonreach cocktails at them. And uh, they they uh, they're just kind of like running and like hurling, and they're just like, "Come on, let's go, let's go!" And they uh, they start to head back towards your direction, and then they see you, and they come and they collect with you. And oh, uh, uh, okay, uh, they're they're in, inside the town. Uh, we should what are, what are we doing? What's the what's the plan? There's a big fucking dragon now, and oh god damn it! Where's Cudgel? I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't. I only found Flail. Uh, well, we got separated. You guys head back to the tunnel. Oh, okay, okay, um, um, here. And he takes one more bottle off and he hands it to you, Tomar. Um, this is all we have left. Um, where's, it, 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 did everybody else make it through? Everyone that we, that were, was with us before, yeah. Okay, okay, um, all right, well, uh, do you, do you need anything else? I, I don't think so. I okay, think um. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what I would need, but yeah, just go. Make sure you guys are safe, take care of your friends okay okay and him and cudgel run off or sorry him and yeah him and cudgel run off or flail run off all right and you guys are standing in the town square let's switch to gorble willem smoochy and zyko you guys are running on the right outskirts you're coming very close to the tavern and outside the tavern you can see there is a cluster of soldiers and they are currently engaging with this larger but younger kid and you recognize him as cudgel and he's trying to hold them off with this big branch that he found. Should we sneak up? There's about there's about mm, eight soldiers. And they're distracted. They're distracted. Yes. Ooh, yeah. We're we're sneaking up. Walls to the wall, I, just I'm like attack. Up. Oh yeah. Let's just. Can I run up and distract hell them? Hell yeah. Oh, Smoochy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you gonna be distracting them, or are you going to be fighting them? I mean, I'm. I'll I'm distracting them. Oh, with, good. With yes. his that giant. one. Sneak that up. one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I will do that. So you're going to sneak up and then... Nope. I'm Use it. charging in. Is Zyko okay. going with him? Zyko it will immediately... When, when he sees Smoochie, like, are you going into rage? Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys watch as Smoochie... <laughs> muscles, like, tensing and veins popping out of his uh, flesh. And he picks up his axe and he just starts fucking booking it at the uh, right um, yes yeah, right roughly there um, and then you see Zyko and he runs <laughs> afterwards run quietly <laughs> and he, he's, he's already gone off. and Sandals you guys gone. and you guys run into the fray just give me a quick act uh, give me a quick attack if you're gonna do that oh I roll Can I make that reckless? Um, yeah, I mean, because it, it can only be your first attack, It is right? kind of reckless. Oh, anyway. yeah. just the... Oh, I was doing both attacks. Um, okay. And you would have advantage because you are surprising them. Oh. Because they are oh. currently engaged. Okay. okay. So that's... Uh, 22. For the first attack? Yep. Okay. Go ahead and roll the second attack just for time's sake. 
That is a 19 plus 13. Okay, so yeah, both of your attacks And hit. that's a crit because of Morishog's Great Axe. Oh, because it's a 19 and 20? Yep. Nice. So your first attack uh, immediately, <laughs> like, crunches through, like, the neck of a soldier. He just uh, drops down in your second attack. You that's see a guy... That's funny, <laughs> because I can immediately move on to the next target. Exactly. If I kill. And you <laughs> see the next guy turn, and he goes to... Uh, he's got a uh, spear, and he goes to spear you, and we'll roll that since it's a crit. His spear comes at you, and you literally slice through the spear into his face, and he's just like, and it just kind of folds out right into his face and drops to the ground. Then you can turn onto the next guy. And right as you do that, you see you guys watch as Zyko, like, leaps in there. And he starts hacking away with his halberd. 24. 24. 24. You hit. Sweet. Now give me a damage on that one. Well, I didn't roll damage on the other ones. Yeah. Um, I'd say they were killing blows because they didn't see you coming, and now these guys are aware. 12. 12 damage for that one. 12 damage? Okay. That guy, uh, he he takes a nice blow from you, but he's... Uh, he's Six, still <laughs> 16, sorry, plus rage damage. Oh, 16. So yeah, he's you chop into him pretty good. He's like... Bleh! And he goes and he engages back at you. Um, so you guys now see that four, uh, four of them, or three of them are, no, four of them are, sorry, three of them are down. Four, the fourth one's being engaged. There's still three guys left. Um, and one of them is uh, kind of chopping into the wood that uh, Cudgel has and uh, is making short work of it. And he actually like s- chops through it with his axe and the two f- pieces fall apart and Cudgel drops to the ground and like tries to crawl away. Um, are there buildings? Uh, mm-hmm. You're right, right in the street. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you have one right to your right. You have the tavern to your left. Okay. I'm going to run up the tavern okay. and onto the roof to get a uh, line of sight advantage. Give me acrobatics. An acrobatics roll. Yeah. Even with my slippers. Oh, shit. That's, oh, I forgot about those. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So you can just, yeah, <laughs> run right up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sweet. Um, all right, and you're up there, and you you can you have a good line of sight. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to uh, let loose on that fucker that's trying to fuck with Cudgel. Okay. Give me an attack. 27. 27. With yeah, with advantage. No. <laughs> 26. <laughs> okay, so 27 does hit... Um, and then, so this will also, I would say since he's so distracted and has no idea, that would count as sneak attack. Um, so go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. Okay, so one and three and 13. 17. Was this in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So... 22. 22. What so plus your, your, sneak your weapon damage. Yeah, that was the D8. But you rolled a 1 and didn't add your modifier to it. Oh, right on. Uh, so 22 plus 7 is 29. Oh, okay. That changes it a little bit. <laughs> did, and did you roll your sneak attack damage as well? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, What do you want? Do you want something? No. Oh, I, you wanted a high five? Yeah, okay. yeah. No, you, you, <laughs> you looked confused when I high fived you. No, it's just because as soon as you hit my arm, like I, I bumped into his water oh. and bumped my mic, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. So Willem, you and just as this guy's bringing his axe down onto Cudgel, you right in his fucking head. The arrow just drops him immediately. Just and he drops the ground. Gorbel, there's two guys left. Are their backs towards me? Their backs are. They're like half turned towards you. Okay. They don't notice you, if that's what you mean. Well, I'm going in with my wolf blood blade. Okay. Oh, shit. So. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. 29. 29 hits. Five. <laughs> <laughs> so five damage. So you kind of you run up and just slice into this dude, and it kind of glances off of his shoulder, and he turns around to engage you they as well. They resist the poison. Oh shit! Sorry. 
he does not resist the poison at all. Four more damage. He's like, oh, fuck, what was that? That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> I get another attack, and I chop into him again. <clears throat> Twenty-five. That hits. Jesus Christ. Five. Five. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, you. She's like, oh fucking ah oh, shit! You cut like pretty much in the same spot. Um, and I say, what is that dragon doing? <laughs> uh, fuck you, bitch! And he. Whoa. <laughs> And he's going to uh, try to okay. attack you. Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, ooh, and yeah, with his uh, with his sword, he turns around, he swings, and he connects. Actually, what what's your AC? Shit, eighteen. Oh, then uh, the tie goes to the defender. So you move out of the way just just barely as this blade like comes slinging at you. You just like back up and kind of. Now pissed off that he said that to you. Well, uh, orcish fury is going to be a thing now. Because <laughs> I am one furious orc. Okay. I mean, it'll happen when I... Okay. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Smoozog. Um, there, are, there are now... There's one guy engaging Gorble, and there's one other guy. The guy that I already chopped into? Yeah. Oh, wait. You, you're, still, you're still engaging that other guy, too. Mm-hmm. So... You gonna attack him? No, yeah. there's so there's technically three left. There's okay. a guy that you were chopping into. Okay, but he is not doing too hot. Like, he's uh, yeah, <laughs> reckless, great weapon master. Wait, can't you only do reckless on your first attack? Nope. <laughs> oh gosh. Per, per round, per round. Oh, you're playing a barbarian in that other campaign. How do you not know this? Well, I'm level two. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so that is a. 22 minus 5 for the Great Weapon Master brings okay. down to 18. Okay. 18 hits. Sweet. <laughs> there you go. Shit. <laughs> that will be... One plus <laughs> four. Fif- 15 damage. 15 damage. For the first hit. Show me what you got. All right. I'm just going to chop his head off. <laughs> okay, so, you, you, if you were to watch, you'd see just a head flying off out of the group from far away. And then I'm gonna kind of use the momentum and bring it down onto the net, bring it down onto the next guy. Okay, so that remaining guy that hasn't engaged yet, go ahead. Nineteen. That hits. That's a crit for me. Oh shit. Yeah, I forgot oh, how fucking baller. Fuck. <laughs> max damage on it too. Oh Damn. my god. Okay, so so I rolled max, so mm-hmm. twenty four plus twelve. Okay, so we'd be 36. looking at thirty six. Yep. Okay, so thirty six damage once again. Show me what you got. All right, um, gonna chop into the s- swing and chop into the side of the guy's head. Okay, then I'm gonna pull it out and go for the next guy. Okay, so if you there just there is another guy. So you just right into his neck, and you, I mean, you hit him so hard that it like almost chops all the way through his neck, and you pull it out. And the neck that most of the people are still engaged, the ones there, there's the one that Gorbel is currently facing, and there's one that Zyko is currently fighting. I'll stab the or slice of one that Zyko is engaged with in the back. Okay, that is twenty. 25 hits. Okay. <clears throat> 7 plus 8 is... 15. 15 plus 4 for rage. 19. So 19. All right. Show me what you got. All right. Um, just going to chop into the into his back right, right <laughs> so, in the middle. So you watch as, like, Zyko's, like, he, like... Hits him up with the with the shaft of his halberd, just like pops him, and his head goes back, and you just th- th- hit him in the back, and a little bit kind of hits him right in the base of his skull, and you just watch blood spurt out, and it th- th- spurts out all over you. Sweet. All right, Gorbel. I'll go for or, the next guy. Wait, I thought we limited it so that you could only do it. Oh, just one, once once per, per round. Okay, yeah. that's, fine. that's fine. Um, or sorry, Willem. There's one guy left, and he's engaging Gorbel right now. Yeah, I'm gonna snipe his ass too. Okay. 
assuming with advantage. Um, how do we figure that worked? If it's close quarters, oh no, you have a really good line of sight. He's on so a yeah. building. Yeah, you're good. Also, if, you, if you if you're trying to, you could bonus action hide, and then do it. That way, you're also hidden. isn't mm-hmm. the guy engaged with Gorbel yeah. mm-hmm. anyway? So, so it's, it's automatic. Yeah, advantage. that's what I thought. That's what I was. Thinking. That's what I was trying to remember if it would be disadvantage or advantage. Sweet. Oh. So, okay, so ad- advantage. Mm-hmm. Advantageous. Yep. Thirty-two. Thirty-two <laughs> hits. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Uh, and we're gonna roll out the sneak attackies. All right, so that's fucking eight plus seven, so that's 15. And oh god, yeah, he's super dead, man. I think (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure he's dead. That looks dead. (laughs) Five, ten, twenty-two, twenty-six, yeah, twenty-nine. Okay, yeah, show him what you got. <laughs> so I kind of hunker down, and I see that he's fucking with Gorble, and I don't like that at all. And I just kind of get a bead right on his, at the base of his skull, and I just let loose. <laughs> all right, Gorble, you're, you're like trading some blows at this dude, and then all of a sudden his head just explodes in front of you, <laughs> and you just get covered in blood, and his body drops down. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Cudgel kind of cl- climbs up from the ground. Oh, thank, th- thank you, thank you, guys. Oh, fuck. Um, what's what? What? What do I need to do? We need to get you out of here. Uh, Head back to the tunnel. Do you know where it is? Over by Gorm's th- shop. Y- yeah, yeah. Do you have any anything I can use to defend myself in case I encounter anybody on the way? I d- that I didn't have my weapon on me, and I had to use a branch. I give <laughs> him my short sword. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, and this big ass dude just lumbers away. <laughs> Be quick. Uh, I'll try. How far does he have to go? Uh, He's got to go from there to... uh, No. um, This? Other side of that. Yep, right there. Do you think he has to encounter a bunch of people? You don't know. I'm just going to give him some bardic inspiration for... Shits and giggles. Sneakiness. Okay, how do you do do that? As he starts to leave, Mm -hmm. I call his name. Cudgel! Yeah? And I flex. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he like is taken aback but in a good way he's like oh uh yeah uh, wow he suddenly seems like he feels a lot more confident move swiftly <laughs> I, I i i i will thank you and he <laughs> runs off dragon lands on him <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the dragon we're gonna switch back to you guys you guys are you can see the dragon hasn't moved much Tomar, Pinwin, and Herstag, but you can see that it's slightly positioning itself in a different way, almost weirdly targeted. And you got now that it's you guys are closer. Give me a perception check. For thirty-six, 14. twenty twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay, you see nothing. So Herstag, your vantage point is a little bit different. You can see something. Uh, on the dragon's back, but you're not sure. You two, however, Pinwin and Tomar, you can see on the dragon's back is a familiar person. Long black hair, large green armor, and a big black beard, and a, an emaciated, broken looking body. You're looking at Zerth Mountain Blade. <sighs> he seems to be controlling the dragon. Do you want to we catch up the him, audience right? on who Zerth Mountain Blade Zerth is? Zerth Mountain Blade is the person who originally attacked Moonreach all those years ago and then and again attacked uh, Ravenmore. You guys killed him in his dragon form as he transformed into a dragon. Uh, but then, weirdly, it was said that he returned, though he was much changed and he was kind of running rampant around uh, Veldalyn and uh, then holding up a, a headquarters in Ravenmore. But what was his position? He is the one of the higher generals in the Rothian army. He's the sous chef. <laughs> and he has a major hard on for us. That's correct. <laughs> this was his pet project. Visibly so. Where are we? But now? you guys also killed his brother, so. Ooh. Oh, boo hoo. We all lost family. You guys are, I remember taunting him a lot about that. Yeah. Uh, you guys are like roughly <laughs> there. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. In the town square there. He does not. Are we nearby those soldiers us. that they were fighting at all? No. They're still there all the way over there by the. Where's the dragon? Uh, the dragon is like roughly where Billy is. In a, in relation to you guys, so uh, a How little much more less. Of the town is there. No, this is outside. He's outside of the town. This is like fields and stuff that he's floating over. Um, 
this that thing has a long range on it, but he's l- a little bit closer than a quarter mile away from you. <clears throat> that changes things. Have I finished casting my spell? <laughs> yes, you have finished. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. But you can see that gem is starting to emanate. I am going to have to read this. Okay. You take control of the weather within five miles of you for the duration. You must be outdoors to cast the spell. Moving to a place where you don't have a clear path to the sky ends the spell early. When you cast the spell, you change the current weather conditions, which are determined by the DM based on the climate and season. You can change precipitation, temperature, and wind. It takes 1d4 times 10 minutes for the new conditions to take effect. Once they do so, you can change the conditions again. When the spell ends, the weather gradually returns to normal. When you change the weather conditions, find a current condition on the following tables and change its stages by one, up or down. When changing the wind, you can change its direction. Damn. So what are you going to do? Within five miles. Um, so what are the, what's the current stage of, uh, temperature? Unbearable heat, hot, warm, cool, cold, arctic cold. It's hot, but also overcast, and now it's starting to drizzle rain. Okay. But it's like warm rain. So it's hot. So imagine kind of like how it's been here. <laughs> so I will keep it hot for now. Wind, uh, this is a very, very like... <laughs> strategic. He's got his finger in the air like <laughs> um calm, moderate wind, strong wind, gale or storm. Uh it's calm. There's like barely any wind right now. Okay, so I'll work on increasing the wind as quickly as I can. That will be so the s- next stage will be moderate wind. Okay. Then precipitation, is it raining yet? Uh yeah, light rain. So rain creating fog because that's uh a step below rain. Okay. And uh I'm going to try to increase the rain to torrential rain. Okay. So. So I need to roll a d4. Mm-hmm. Shit. So 30 minutes. 30 minutes it's going to take? For the first stage, yeah. Okay. Oh. I was like, that was like the second best oh, you could so do. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Never mind. 30 Wait, minutes for it this, to start? Wasn't this 10 minutes for it, your first for it stage? to get to that point. Oh, it's, okay. no, it's a d4 times It takes 10. 10 minutes to cast the spell, and then the effects don't take it place until 1d4 times 10 well, minutes. Shit. Cool. Once we kill the dragon, it's going to start bl- blasting rain down on us. <clears throat> All right. So uh, will you guys real quick roll initiative for me? Just start just these three for now, just because, yeah, that way it's just easier to track. Dang, you guys all rolled really well. 21. Okay. 20. 20. 27. Okay. Um, Pinwin, you're up. Um, actually, you see this dragon, and um, that's kind of distracting you, but then you hear a... I need dex saves from all of you guys. Oh, yeah. Eight. Eight. Natural 20. Nice. So 23. You're just focusing on the weather, and you're like, no, no. (laughs) 20. 20. Okay. So you guys hear the thwack of bowstrings being fired, and... uh, We'll say, Herstag, because you're so in tune with the weather right now, you can feel the barometric change in the actual wind, and you can feel in the wind an arrow coming your direction, and you move out of the way as it hits the ground. Pinwin, you see it. You hear it. You turn. The sound was very recognizable to your ears. You turn, and you see arrows being fired, and you move out of the way. You and Shadow, like, dodge out of the way. Tomar, (laughs) a little bit distracted by this big-ass dragon, you are hit by an arrow. And you're going to take eight damage. But now you guys can see on the other side of the fountain, there is a there are four archers that are set up. How far um, away is that? Uh, that's like 25 feet away from you. So I'm going to get all pissed off. Okay. And uh, I'm going to walk a couple of feet and then I'm going to the wings are going to sprout from the armor and I'm going to fly up and I'm just going to huck. Uh, the Moonreach cocktail down on them. Okay. Um, well, and it's my turn. Yeah, I was going to say, unless if, yeah. So, Pinwin, what are you going to do in this immediate scenario? 
So well. I'll say that the wings came out right now as a reaction kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so. You can see these archers. I know. I just. And they're partially. I wanted to try something with under, the dragon. The, um, we're too far away from him. The, he's okay. like way over there where Billy is, like they say. Right. And they're under partial cover, FYI. So. Has it been within 24 hours since I've done Favored Enemy? When, when was the last time you. No, it, it, it has know. not. It's no. been a long time. Um, okay. Then I'll go ahead and I'll do. Uh, I'll do Hail of Thorns. Okay. You're gonna ready Hail of Thorns and you're yep. gonna fire at one of the archers? Mm hmm. Okay. And they're all clustered pretty close together. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Natural 20, I assume? Yep. All right. Okay. So then let's see. So each creature within five feet of this must make a dex throw. And well, uh, I would imagine if you're reading Hail of Thorns, you'll pick one of the guys in the middle. Yeah. Okay. All right. So okay. dex. First one does not save. And neither of these guys are going to save. Um, oh, third one. And that's a natural one. So, um, right. all right. So, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. So, when I never use this. 1d10 piercing damage on a failed save. So, yeah, that's good. So, seven, seven piercing damage with okay. that. But then with the crit um, for the general attack. That would be... Well, you have to roll for the general attack as well. Oh. That was this. No, no that was damage. two attack. Your, yeah, sorry, yeah. Your, your D8 for the long, right. long bow. Damn it. <laughs> that sucks. Um, that's so okay. eight plus this plus your modifier. Yeah, so... Right, okay. So 14? So, yep. So 14 damage all around. Mm -hmm. So you... And then everyone around him got the seven damage. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the arrow flies, sticks this guy in the chest, ugh, like right below his kind of rib, like just above the rib cage. Um, it's a nice shot. And then the thorns like attack the guys next to him. They're all like, ah, and now they're all distracted. Her stag. Okay. Um, well, yeah, then I'll try to shoot at him again. Okay. Same guy. Yeah. If he's not. Yeah. He's, why not? Okay. So that'd be. 28. 28 hits. Okay. Actually, it, it would be at advantage anyway, since you've oh, distracted right. them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, seven? So seven additional damage. Okay. okay, so... And the second one hits pretty close to the other one. Um, and that guy's... He's still alive, but he, he like, starts to lean over, and he puts his, like, bow down, and he looks like he's starting to reach for a different weapon. Uh, the other two guys are doing all right. Herstag. Um, how far away are these guys? Uh, they're like 25 feet from you. And are they on a roof? No, they're be tucked behind the fountain. Behind the fountain. Hmm. Um, I'll go ahead and thorn whip one of them. Okay. And, um, I'll try to drag them towards... Uh, our melee fighter. Okay, gotcha. Well, that was shit. <laughs> um, 19. 19? 19 hits. Yeah. That was shit? <laughs> That's pretty it was, good. It was a bad roll, but I have a high um, modifier. Which one are you aiming for? There's Ooh. four of them. One has been badly bit, like, bitten by, uh, by the uh, penguin arrow. If I could get slightly... There's one that hasn't been touched yet. Slightly behind Tomar. I want to angle it so I'm trying to drag one of them towards Tomar. Okay. Um, you so just pop over my that shoulder. Is, that yeah, would be probably the <laughs> the uh, farthest one, the one that hasn't actually been touched yet. So I didn't mean okay. To. So 12, 14, 15 damage. 15 damage. Does he have to roll to resist being nope. pulled? Okay. So not only do you like lash him, you just he's like ah! like fucking Padme and uh, <laughs> attack of the claws like ah! <laughs> and then you <laughs> and you pull him ten feet ten feet. Tomar. So he's 
he's shortened the distance by half, and now he's out and exposed. And um, we'll even say like his his bow and arrow go clattering away from him because that was just not what he was anticipating. Um, and now he's lying prone on the ground. Okay. Is that your whole? Yep. Okay. Tomar. Well, I'm going to walk up a couple of feet and fumble. You fumble? Yeah. Okay, so this guy's like writhing around on the ground. Oh, wait, I have advantage. Yes, because he's prone. 18. Eight. It's 13 damage. 13 damage. Okay, so. <laughs> Show me what you got. I just take the sword in a downward motion and I just stab it in. <laughs> he's like, oh! And he's done. And then I pull the sword out and then I fly up to the other guys and then okay. I. Can I use my two attack actions to just throw the Moonreach yeah, guy That would down be an, an action, yeah. Oh, it's an action? That would be like your. Because that was your first attack, right? Yeah. So you get two, right? Yeah. But so those yeah. aren't actions. Those are attacks. Sorry. Your your second attack would be to throw that Moonreach cocktail. Is it just strength modifier? Yeah. It would just be like a thrown weapon. 22. With Tw- advantage. 22. Yep. 22. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you... All right. Give me a uh, roll uh, 3d6s. Nine. Nine. Okay. So these guys are on fire um, Mm -hmm. and screaming, and uh, two of them go down. One guy is still alive. I thought there was only three of them. Yeah. What did I just say? I just stabbed one of them in the spine. There were four total. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I will point at him from midair, and then a a bell's going to ring out through the city. (laughs) Okay. Boom. That's an an action. You can't do that for one of your attacks. Yeah. Okay, so you just point at him. <laughs> no, Get ready. No, I'm not. You make a bell sound. Mm-hmm. Boom. How far away is he? <laughs> uh, he's still like 25 feet. I'm going to fly down to him and chop him. Okay. I'm not going to waste my last ten <laughs> pointing at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 22. 22 hits. 18 damage. Show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> so I point the sword forward and I just swoop down and All right. pierce him. With <laughs> and he's f- on fire too, so he's just like. <laughs> and he f- slides off of your blade. I turn back. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> All, All right. right. So the two guys that are down and on fire Every- are, everybody's are dead. dead. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's yeah, dead. Just- um, <laughs> okay. We got a gang. Uh, all right. Switching back to Gorbel, Willem, and Smoochie and Psycho. All right. You guys have very easily cut through these guys. What's your next plan? <clears throat> I communicate to Tomar via okay. the talkie. Mm-hmm. We found Cudgel. Is that his name? Mm-hmm. We found Cudgel. He's heading back to the tunnel right now. We killed some soldiers. <clears throat> We're okay. Then I turn to the rest of the group. Is there nobody else hearing it this time? Mm-mm, I no. heard it. Okay. What? Yeah. That's weird that you I'm guys... I'm not hearing it at all, like, this whole time. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so uh, we'll start where you say you turn to the rest of the group, so go ahead and say that again, and then... <clears throat> I turn to the rest of the group and ask, should we make a distraction? You will also not know that we found Cork and right. Flail. I know. Okay. But I'll tell them that they found Cudgel. Okay. So, um, don't we have the um, mind? No, thing we're mm-hmm. using the. We didn't. She didn't cast because she has low spells. Yeah. Oh, right. Bitch needs some rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's let's keep circumventing the the town to see if there's any other soldiers that we can dispatch uh, while we get a bead on this dragon. Okay. All right, so you guys are going to skirt around. Um, you guys pass the entrance to um, one of the entrances to the village, and you pass by the, I believe that's the graveyard. Yep. And you guys can see that uh, um, it, it, if you were the nostalgic type, you would see that's where some of your, in your in your youth, that's where some people were. not. Were. Okay, well, <laughs> it's a graveyard. <laughs> um, and you guys... Pass by that um, and uh, start heading towards the other exit to town, towards the dragon. And um, now you can see 
maybe 500 feet off, there's a large cluster of soldiers. Um, over 100 heading towards the town. Fuck you guys. They, it doesn't seem like they've seen you. You guys are still kind of under the swell of the hill. Just you throw cantrips at them. They'll explode. <laughs> um, right. We should probably try to hide. Yeah. Do we have anything that could maybe take out a massive number of soldiers? You have a smoochie. I could. Yeah. Too bad her Maury isn't here to explode everything. How, how like far these guys out are going to be cut to ribbons uh, if you guys just charge in. Uh, they'll be. Like, I, I think like yeah, two hundred feet away. Totally, three hundred, four hundred, somewhere. Oh, okay. That. So yeah. not, not that, level not seventeen, like a football field. Yeah, out, out just out of town. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna set up shop on top of a building. Okay, again. Um, you've only got one near you. Okay, uh, you've got the just a, a house. Um, it's just a it used to belong to somebody. Um, right there. So you're gonna go up there. Yep, I'm gonna hop up on top. Smoochie, I'll cover you. Dive in. And Zyko. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> like, just charge out there. Do you. Would you rather invite them to a tea party? Yes. <laughs> Is the tea. your axe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I might. I might just wait for them to get up here. Are they charging now? We'll tell they're, you. They're okay. charging towards the Actually, town. even better. Yes, uh, I will draw them in with fire, and you guys hide in the alley, and we'll fucking ambush them. Beautiful. What size group are they in? Uh, they're in they're in formation, running. Like, How big is that? Like over a hundred. <laughs> no, I mean feet wise. Oh, uh, I mean it spans a a, a decent distance, probably. Um, I mean, if there's a hundred of them. I would say a fifty foot width of soldiers rushing so there's just the two lines of soldiers yeah something like that okay they're unsullied and it. how far away are they right now a uh, couple hundred feet <laughs> it's hard to judge exactly but yeah I'm getting hypnotic pattern yeah. ready okay. okay so that's I can cast that from 120 feet okay so gotcha. I just have to wait for a couple seconds and it's a 30 foot cube so I'm gonna cast it right in the middle so then we just have a couple little Rose on the end. Okay, Pick so you're off. gonna you're gonna wait till they get a little bit closer, and then you're gonna cast it right in the Fuck middle. Yes, okay. come a little bit closer. And not a Smoochie, what are you planning on doing? I'm gonna hide right behind this building here. Okay, gotcha. And uh, motion to Zyko to kind of stand behind me. Be okay. Ready. All right. And Willem, you were doing? I'm up on the building, and I'm just gonna start letting loose arrows into the crowd of soldiers. Okay, so. You start firing. Um, well, I won't have you roll for that because it's a big mass. You could just start. <laughs> and then you said they're fire. Is that what you said? Fire arrows? Or are you just, no, firing? just firing? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, loose arrows. All right. So you um, give me a give me a higher low. Hi. Okay. So you actually like a few go out <laughs> and like one or two soldiers go down and you should just see like their heads disappear. Um, but these guys are charging, and so those guys probably got trampled. Um, and they get closer and closer. Um, let's switch back to you guys real quick. What is, you guys can hear uh, Tomar and Pinwin and Hirstag. You guys can, um, from where you are, you can hear soldiers are approaching. A large mass of soldiers are approaching from from the uh, from the east. You guys don't know Zerth Mountain Blade, but I've got a pass with him. I'm gonna fly up to the top of that dragon. Can you guys give me cover? Yeah. I think. Um, That's a lot of cover, though. I mean, I'm... I'm casting this, uh... Control weather spell. Um, that's all I can really do. I mean, it's foggy. It's, yeah, it's starting to get foggy, yeah. Can you provide cover for me while I go up there? Like, what do you mean? If there's soldiers, attack them. Oh, yeah, oh, we'll yeah, be sure. on that. That's what that's I want. Fine. Yeah, okay. that's fine. And that's then I start that easy, flying. Easy. That's all I want. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Well, so yeah, like, as, as you start lifting. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, all that's I, all I want. want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, good luck, guys. Fucking be careful. Larry David wait. in armor. Yeah. Oh, wait, I can't. Oh. What? 
I can't do any. I couldn't do a bonus action thing right now, could I? I We're mean, not on turns. Yeah. Mm. What would you like to do? Please tell me. What do you want? I wanted to do the. It wasn't going to be that big of a deal, but the mantle of inspiration. Do it. Can I do that? Yeah. Why not? Wait. As what is it? Oh. What does it do? Yeah. As a bonus action, spend one of one use of bardic inspiration to grant eight temporary HP up to five creatures. You can see. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Bit. Do it. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Before you go, and then I'm going to, I don't know, I'm gonna blow a kiss into the air. It, and then I'm going to target my air kiss <laughs> to my allies with me. So Tomar and Herseg and Shadow. Okay, so yeah, Pinwin blows a kiss and then this like magical <laughs> kind of <laughs> flutters at you guys and you feel inspired. So and it's just a flat eight. So now, yeah, you have eight temp HP. Sick. Which would be great for Shadow. And then you start floating up towards the dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay. It also says you can immediately use your reaction to move up to up to what speed? Up to its speed without provoking opportunity. So we can all move up to our regular speed. Like if we were surrounded by enemies right Mm -hmm. now, we could move wherever we wanted without getting hit. It's a really good escape spot. Feature sure. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm going yeah. to try and not be in line of sight of the dragon, though. Okay. I'm gonna like fly sideways and around. And from this vantage point, um, as you fly up, you can actually see those soldiers that are approaching. And then give me a perception check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, you're not positive, but you're pretty sure you can see movement um, down towards the entrance of the city, kind of by the graveyard. Um, but you can't really make out exactly what it is, but you're pretty sure that could be your allies. They look, you see some movement and then like as if they're hiding and you can see this approaching army off. Does Willem see Tomar in the air? (laughs) Give me a perception check, Tomar or Willem. I heard it then. What is that? Four. Oh, okay. That was fucking weird. Uh, 17. 17. Um, you're kind of distracted by this, um, and I would say that you don't see Tomar in this moment. Um, it's, it's like way behind. It's, you know, it's, you know, like 400 feet behind you, and he's floating up into the air. Uh, so, yeah, you don't, you don't see anything. Okay. Uh, you just, you're concentrating on this army that you're firing off into. Um, okay, switching back to you guys. They are now within 120 feet, Gorbel. I cast Hypnotic Pattern. I do my little cat's cradle okay. hand motion thing, and I need a wisdom save of 19. So we'll do a group wisdom save. How many soldiers would you say are in that area? Of 30 feet? Yeah. Uh, 60 soldiers. Cool. Of how, What was it? 19. They do not save. Yes. Okay. Okay, so they have a speed of zero. So all of these soldiers just... Incapacitated. Like right right in the middle, you said? Okay, high or low? I mean, like the front part of the middle. High or low? High. Okay, so these soldiers seeing this hypnotic pattern just freeze in place, and those that don't see it don't know what's happening, but they're all at a run. So you watch yes. as these ones that freeze get start to get trampled by the ones in front of them, and then those right. guys like start falling over themselves and stuff like that. So you've created this mass chaos of just like clustered limbs and stuff. Like they were running at a good clip, they were charging, and so now there's there's way less that are actually charging towards you guys. I, probably closer to thirty now, um, and uh, or no, closer to fifteen that are charging at you guys and the rest of them are all trying to figure out what the fuck just happened because those guys are they're just in a congealed mass right now just like oh fucking ah shit ah cool so they're a (laughs) hundred so they're 150 feet away yes and then we'll go to um go the we'll roll initiative real quick i should have had you do that but still man that might have been better had they been in the town already because then they could have just started chopping into them while they were incapacitated (laughs) Wait. But still good. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm not worried. What was your initiatives? <laughs> you guys got Mine this was shit. 13. 13? 14. Eight. 14. 18. 18. Okay. Um, 
we'll, we'll, we'll pop you down to the bottom just for this next round. Mm -hmm. um, Willem, you are... Uh, oh, forgot Zyko. So he's at the bottom, but it's your turn, Willem. They okay. are... These guys are roughly 100 feet now, the, the closer ones, in that instant that that happened. Okay, I... Uh, pull out the magic arrow from okay. my quiver mm -hmm. and I attune it to the splody arrow. Okay, gotcha. So it's a, it's a bright hot kind of orange with a red hue around it. Okay. And I aim it towards the middle of the incapacitated group. Okay. Uh, to get mass most damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And now you will have advantage because a lot of them are like prone and like all like fucked up. Sweet. Okay, so... Well, they're yeah. incapacitated, too. Yeah. Whew. All right, so... Mm. What's that one, a three? Yeah. Okay, so... 19. 19, okay. Um, do, we, do you have the damage for that? Five, 14, 19, 22, 29, 32, 34. Roll two more. And... Hoo, hoo, hoo. 39 and 47. Okay, so 47. So you that are there, and Tomar, you would actually see this now um, it, because this is a bright light. You So Willem draws this arrow, and as he pulls back, you, you everyone around can hear this. And it... And it hits the group in the center, and it's just this... And you just see body parts like flying through the air in a 20 foot radius. So there's a lot of dead smoking corpses now. Whoa. I don't think we can take a hundred of them. <laughs> I bet if we just, I bet if we just ran in. You guys are doing fine. And you know how bad I am in combat. <laughs> Did get cut twice. Five damage. By <laughs> By a, her fucking teammate. Smoozog. Yeah, right. that's the one. I'm going to take advantage of this chaos and just start charging the ones that are still running at us. Okay, so you, what's your charge? I mean, yeah, you'll meet up with them, so you and Move, Zyko. Movement is 40 feet. So 80 if you charge. Um, so yeah, you'll meet up with them for sure. You and Zyko f smash into the first group of, like, seven of them. <laughs> um and go ahead and give me give me three attack rolls. Okay. And they're all going to be reckless. And I bonus action raged. So that's 26 for the first. Ugh. Um, 22? 21 and um, 29 29 21 and 22 26 26 okay 26 20 29 26 21, 21. okay and perfect 29 okay or something they <laughs> uh, they all hit uh okay so smoochie and Zyko, all three all three of those rolls were all well enough to start making some short work so you guys are flying into this fray and you're basically just slicing through these guys like fucking hot knives and uh, so now there's this other column of about seven or eight guys on the left hand side that's still approaching but we're going to switch back real fast to Herstag Pinwin and Tomar alright Tomar you're floating up there and towards this dragon and you can see now that the gem is and you can see the direction that this thing is facing and it looks like it's facing towards the graveyard. How many feet am I away? Um, let's see, how that much time, so it's a you're still a few hundred feet away. Okay. I'd say I'd say a hundred let's say hundred and fifty feet. You're you've you've gained some distance in that time. Okay. Yeah, I can't really do anything other than keep going. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my turn to dash, though, so I go 80 feet. Okay. So, it. so you fly up pretty close. You're still, you know, you've got, what, 70 feet left? Can I see how this contraption is 
Can I see how this contraption is connected to the dragon? Uh, it's connected by a what looks to be a chain that is actually like hanging off of its back and hanging low. So it's basically like wearing it like almost like a belt. That's it looks like it's been lashed around a few times. But the chain, it, the there's from, one dangling chain. Yes, on both sides. So it's holding it like suspended, like a necklace, kind of. So this chain, roughly each link widthwise, is about eight inches to a foot wide. And you can tell that they're probably, the, the links themselves in thickness are about four inches around. It's a pretty big chain, and it hangs it hangs about 20 feet below the dragon as it's flying. So not something that would be easy to chop through? No, not. Okay. okay. Well, um, I moved as far as I could for now. Okay, and uh, Hurstag and Pinwin, are you going to do anything in the meantime? You don't see any immediate threats or dangers. Pinwin? We don't see any? Not in like, your immediate surroundings. Talking to the mic. Do we see the soldiers on their way? Uh, they're off in the distance. You can hear them. Yeah, you can kind of see the the mass. You saw a, la- a large explosion. Okay. Um. Um. How far away are the enemies? Um, four hundred feet, five hundred feet. How far away is the dragon? B- roughly the same. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but. You, with your range on your bow, could you could hit the dragon. Oh, how far did he say it was? 150? 400 feet. Yeah. 400? I can. I can. Uh, isn't that only if they're my favorite enemy? No, no. With a long bow. The range on your bow is... The outside range is like... 600. 150 oh, to 600. Mm-hmm. The... So yes. it'd be disadvantage. Not to be like a massive meta gamer here, but do we know what kind of dragon this is? Do we you can remember? see that it's you, it's green. It's green scales on it. Do, does anybody know what that is? Uh, roll uh, anybody who can see the dragon <coughs> or has seen the dragon. Give me an Arcana check. I know. What kind of dragon All right. It is. Maybe say it. That would be <laughs> meta gaming. That would be twenty. Um, you are a meta gamer. Twenty. Ten. 13. 13. Okay. Um, who got 20? I got 23. 23. And then you would already know. So. Oh, would I know? Didn't you just say that? Elijah knows. Oh, I thought you were saying her say. Okay. Yeah. So rolled a 10. So no, (laughs) you have, you're, you, you have no idea what kind of dragon this is. Uh, Pinwin, when you're very brief experience with dragons in the past, you know that this is a, an adult Green dragon. The dragon's green. <laughs> All right. <laughs> which well, um, is which damage type? Uh, oh. Elijah, can you just yeah, answer? That's good. Poison. Poison. <laughs> Thank you, Elijah. That dragon's poison. Poison. So, like, if uh, if you have like a an icy dragon and you hit it with fire. It does more damage, right? Or De- it like depending on the dragon. So some, what some is wood. like? What's a lot the- of dragons don't have like weaknesses. To a anything. lot of them actually have like legendary resistances anyway. So <coughs> like they, yeah. Damn. Um. Is this accurate? Like where they are? Is, yeah. Yes, that's where they what are. What is this little building? That's, that's where building. That's the bil- building that Willem. Willem is standing on. But you wouldn't oh. be able to see that. Uh. So yeah. So. You know, Pinwin, that this is an adult green dragon. Uh, they are, they do have the, the cape, they're, basically they are a poison type. Um, they do not have any, um, like, weaknesses against a certain type, necessarily. Um, but they are immune to being poisoned, so you do know that much. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know that they speak Draconic. Uh, you know pretty much a lot about them. Um, you would know that this thing is very, very, very strong. Was it a green an dragon that Duran fought? No, that was not a. It that wasn't. Was, there wasn't even a total. It wasn't a dragon. Pinwin thought it was a dragon for a really long time, but it was actually like a like a young little drake. It was a. It was a dr- draconic creature, basically. Yeah. Mm. But it has sent Pinwin down the path of wanting to <laughs> fight and kill a dragon. Mm-hmm. So, Hersteg, I, yeah. I have to tell you, so for a long time, so technically how I met Durant, um, he kind of saved me <laughs> from a dragon, and ever since, it's kind of been my big adventuring 
bucket list checklist thing. I'd kind of like to kill a dragon, but at the same time, I really want to talk to this one. Right. So if it's totally a baddie dragon, then we're just, I'm I'm gonna try and kill it. Which I'm sure your plan is probably to kill the dragon, right? Sounds good. Okay. Um, do you know anything about dragons at all? Oh, um. <laughs> Does Pinwin know that this type of dragon is evil? Yes, you would know that this is an evil. Green dragon. dragons always are evil. Dragon. Are always evil. Any yes. of the like the normal colors of the dragon, like a red, blue, green, those are almost always going to be evil. Hmm. But the I metallic think ones. Are I think good. it's also very Pinwinish to think <laughs> maybe this. Uh, this yeah. evil dragon has redeeming qualities. You don't qualities. judge a dragon by its color. <laughs> Even though they're my favorite enemy and I want to kill them. <laughs> Even though I want to kill it. <laughs> favored. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the key words here, Seth. <laughs> fair, fair. So, uh, do you know anything about dragons at all? Oh, this green one? Um, I've, I've read a few things here and there, but this green one, it's definitely poisony, and I don't know, I don't think it has a weakness at all but we definitely can't poison it if you were thinking about that don't I poison wasn't it. that yeah. helps though yeah I'm gonna yeah. we're gonna go hide if that's okay you yeah. wanna hide with us yeah let's, let's go hide so we're gonna move no on. you're not there that's what? them you're these you there. guys yeah. we're these guys yeah man I got that confused and we'll hide around this corner okay <laughs> <laughs> and then while we're doing that, I'm gonna treat. I'm gonna get hypnotic pattern ready. Okay, start preparing it. Yes. Switching back to Willem and Gorble, Zyko and Smoochie. Gorble and Willem, give me perception. Fourteen. Seventeen. All right. So, just, just on the cusp of both of you guys is. Uh, attention you can hear a and you guys look up and you see that this dragon holding this basically giant medallion around its waist the gem again is burning bright bright purple and it looks like it's facing right at you guys Uh into the talkie I say Tomar we need a distraction now it looks like it's going to blast its destruction ray at us Is there anything else you guys want to do in this? I'll give you like six seconds, like a round. Smoochie, I imagine you're just still chopping away. Mm -hmm. We can do an action? Not you. How how big is the like is the hit area that Um, that ray hits? You don't know for sure, but you know it's big. You don't know for sure. You know it's big. Um, It causes a lot of destruction. So there's still soldiers there, right? Anybody have major image? I start running down the far side of the building okay toward i guess away from our current area to okay more toward the other group okay and, um you don't I, know or yeah you don't know where they are right now why don't we I, did talk about one we, group's going left one group's yeah, going right i should so know, know the, the general, general okay gotcha that's fine yeah. okay okay and i i yell for the other ones guys Let's meet back up with the other group. Um, Smoochie, give me a perception. Are we right under them? Or right on? Oh, wait. You're way far away. I thought Willem said he was on the building or something (laughs) by us. 16. Nowhere near you guys. 16. You can hear Willem shouting something, but you're in the midst of combat. And you look off. Like, you take a quick second to look, and you can see him running in the opposite direction. And I'm kind of, I'm doing the... Yeah, like a hand movement thing. So, you can discern... That he's trying to he's trying to tell everybody to run. Okay. You've you've Psycho. wiped out you've wiped out about half of these guys. Right. So. Psycho, let's go. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Let's follow Willem. All right. Uh, so you guys kind of disengage and then, um, you guys fucking piss off back towards um where you guys came from. And then Gorbal, are you gonna run as well? Hell yeah. Okay. So you guys faster start- than everybody too. <laughs> yeah. So you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just dust towards uh, which direction you heading? Like the way that Willem was running. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, you guys all start running in that direction, and um, Tomar, you are now 
very close to the dragon. But I do need you to give me a wisdom save. Sixteen. Sixteen. Sorry, one sec. Ty goes to the defender. So this dragon kind of... You don't have like inspiration that. or anything? Oh, yeah, you actually have advantage on saving throws from foresight. Nope. 16. I still defend, <laughs> though. Yeah, so just barely. Like, you, for a split second, you were like, oh, fuck. Like, you're fly- flying way close up to this dragon, but your, your, like, inner desire kind of overpowers what you thought might have actually affected you much worse uh, and uh, made you afraid. So it is now your turn. All right. You're within 60 feet of this dragon. Damn it, then. Bad time to be afraid. Or I guess, no, you had, you had, you are, if you've been moving forward, you're about 40 feet within this dragon. All right, then I'm going to fly up to the, one of the chains. Okay. On the device. All right. And I'm going to, my hands are going to start to warble. Okay. And ethereal energy is going to pool out of them. And I'm going to clasp my hands on the chain. And I'm just going to teleport away 30 feet above on top of the dragon. So I'm trying to take one of the chains and just pull it with you. Yeah. Into a, another plane. Okay. So. One of the links, right? Yeah. So. And what, what's the, what is the, just anything you're touching can go with you. I just open a portal between worlds and then teleport 30 feet, but I wanted to, like, focus that on the chain. Like, anything I'm holding should teleport with me. Gotcha. So you grab onto this one link, and you... And you... Up here above, and you two, Pinwin and uh, Herstag, you can see this very clearly. You watched him get super close, grab onto the chain, and then disappear, and then you watch as the chain <laughs> drops low and then like a ne- a pendant following falling off a necklace it just <laughs> slides off of the chain and starts plummeting down below just as <laughs> it shoots off and it shoots off cl- like clear into the sky <laughs> and which actually nice. propels the thing itself Not to nice. <laughs> fly into the ground and <laughs> it hits the ground and Higher low, Tomar. Hi. And it looks like it's actually pretty damaged. You watch as the stone flies out of the contraption itself and lies on the ground. How big is the stone itself? Uh, It's hard to tell from this distance, but it's like head-sized. Having teleported to the top of the dragon, I'm going to turn to Zerth. I'm going to throw the chain down, and I'm going to say, long time no see. And he looks up at you, but... The eyes that find you don't seem to recognize you, and they almost seem distant and misty, as if he's not all there. Disty, disty. Um, <laughs> he's been listening, and to he just kind of he kind of looks <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks up at you, and takes a more forceful grab on the back of the dragon. And now you can see he's he's not he's he looks like he's just up there. He's not lashed to anything. He's just standing on the dragon, and he uses this moment to grab onto the back of the dragon. You can hear the dragon kind of again, and he reaches behind him, and he slides this long blade uh, off of the sheath in his back, and he stands at the ready just staring at you. Um, Pinwin and Herstag, do you want to do anything in this moment? You just watch this beam fly off. And how far (laughs) away on the ground is this stone? Uh, From you? Yeah. Probably oh, still a few, like, 150, 200 feet, somewhere. I'll get it later. Um, I'm, running, I'm running for the stone. You're running for the... can't do anything oh. right now. You're going to run for the stone? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So you well, watch I'll her say just... <laughs> and then you hop on uh, Shadow. Shadow and yeah. start running? Yeah. All right. So you guys start running for that stone. We can put it in the bag. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Wait. Finally. Something to put in the bag. I got an idea. <laughs> One second here. I can just have a treasure trove in my bag. In this moment, uh, while he's doing that, Willem, give me a perception check, and Gore will give me a perception check. I was gonna see if I would, nice. I was, I could wild Fuck shape yeah. to get Except there faster, the but I, I'm out of wild shapes. Wish I could roll those on fucking combat. <laughs> but whatever, twenty nine. Twenty nine. Did we get a short rest? 
no. before all this happened? We did not. No. Like, not a long rest, but a short nope. rest? Nope. We did not. No, because you weren't there in At the tavern the long enough before this oh. stuff was happening. Shit. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven? Okay, so, Gorble, you're just focusing on getting the fuck out of there. You see this, the, the beam <laughs> fly off into the sky, but Willem, you can now see Pinwin and her stag booking it towards where the thing fell, and you can also see that Tomar is floating above the dragon, um, and he seems to be communicating with someone, and you can just barely see that there is someone on the top of the dragon. Actually, no, with that roll, you can see Xurth Mountain Blade standing on top of the dragon. And I don't recognize this guy, though, right? You do. Yep. I do. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's from Did your I run hometown. Into him? He was in Ravenmore. He was in Ravenmore just before you left. Ah. Uh, okay. Oh. Was he from the oh. hometown, though? From Moon? He's the, he's the one who originally... Was he one of the guys that we fought in the town square before the dragon showed up? Yes. yes. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Um, oh, I'm okay. I'm gonna actually stop now that the immediate danger has been mm-hmm. <laughs> taken care of. Thanks, Tomar. Um, and I'm gonna turn around real quick to retrieve my magic arrow. Okay. All right. Well, the magic arrow uh, reappears in your quiver, so you won't ever have to. I nice. forgot that. Yep. That's a thing Aww. that. But it does, it does take 15 minutes to do. That's fair. Okay. You in that case, I'm just wolf. gonna keep <laughs> fucking booking it. And now that I see Herstag and Pinwin, I'm gonna go to meet up with them. Okay. Since and I can't <laughs> obviously do anything. And, and Gorble, <laughs> you see guy. Willem change directions and start running off. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Herst- so Herst- Elijah. Oh, for my action, when I said I was running, mm-hmm. what I would like to do is teleport 60 feet ahead. Okay. Then use my movement, which is 25 feet, okay. plus another 25 feet for a dash action. Mm-hmm. So that's 50, 50 plus, 60, plus 60, so, so 140 10. feet away from the... Yes. I didn't yeah. know Herstag so, was a loot ninja. So, yeah, so <laughs> Pin, when you watch Herstag just disappear right next to you and then appear farther ahead of you, and then he's still running, <laughs> like nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> and then Smoochie and Zyko <laughs> will say that y- they w- see the change in direction as well and start uh, heading that way. Gorbel, do you want to do anything in this moment? Now you can see, now that you've changed directions, you watch this, you can see that he's going after Pinwin and Herstag. And you can see that this dragon's up there. Yeah, I want to meet up with my group. Okay. Tomar, you're floating there. He hasn't made any move at all. Uh, well, how far away is he? I mean, if you're floating there, he's probably 30 to 40 feet away from you. I'm just going to float up to him and try and attack. Okay. Um, give me just a quick initiative. Let's see what happens here. 11. 11. Okay, so uh, he um, he kind of just watches you as you um, float at him to attack. So go ahead and roll your attack. I have advantage, right, Elijah? Yep. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay, you hit. He can't bring his blade up quickly enough. Uh, twelve. Twelve damage. So you chop into him, um, and he's he. As you chop into him, he goes and uh, give me a uh, opposing strength here. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, he goes to grab your wrist as, while you're in this combat here, but you easily just like pull your wrist away, and now you have an attack of opportunity because what he's trying to do is very concentrated. Shit. Um. Well, my attack wasn't over. Basically, am I doing a regular attack action? Uh, yeah, you're still in the middle of it. Then, yeah, I'm using a legendary action. FYI. Oh. Um. So is this? An attack of opportunity or just my the rest yeah, of the I will attack? give you an attack of opportunity because he tried to interrupt your attack. So, 18. 18. Okay. That hits. Uh, 11. 11? Okay. So you do 11 damage now. Let me... Shit. Uh, can I have a pencil? I don't know where I put mine. Okay. All right, we're and then you have one. You have two more attacks. Uh, second one hits, and then twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. Okay. Those both hit. Yep. 
14. 13 damage. And okay. then with a bonus action, I'm going to aim Steel Song at him and try and blind him. Okay. Wisdom save. Does not save. Right, so blind. he is now blinded. So Tomar, in that moment, you have you you're like chopping into him, um, and then you tilt your blade, and it just hits the light perfectly, and that's the first noise you've heard from him, and the it sounds very hollow and and not like what you remember his voice sounding like. It sounds more like guttural and. Is this similar to what Lewin seemed like when we were fighting her before? Yes. Okay. Shit. And everyone other than Tomar, I need you to roll a dexterity save. Twenty-one. Twenty-three. Twenty-five. Her stags was... <clears throat> 22. Okay. 22. And uh, Smoochies was 18. Smoochies was 18. Okay, so everyone sees the dragon. It looks right at, like, pretty much at your cluster of groups. It's And you can see, even from this distance... The eyes don't have any irises in them. Mm. And it opens its mouth. (coughs) And you guys watch as this, like, sludge starts pouring out of the dragon's mouth like a faucet just... (coughs) And you guys avoid it as the big... (coughs) Big uh, amounts drop and hit the ground. And anywhere these drops hit, you watch as the ground and the grass just starts smoking and sizzling. <laughs> but this uh, this big viscous mass starts moving. And it starts running along the ground towards the village itself at a very quick speed. Luckily you guys were able to get out of the way as these these like rivulets of of what appears to be acidic poisonish stuff starts <laughs> rolling in and it hits one of the buildings at, in, in Moonreach and immediately you watch as the building itself just dissolves and this thing just starts moving in through the town and that's where we're going to stop for tonight yeah that's Fuck. a baddie dragon not going to talk to that one <laughs> <laughs> he don't want to talk you know I thought about it I thought about it a little bit and I think it's better that we just not yeah I can tell that we are not going to be friends <laughs> So yeah, um, yep, that was uh, that was uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, that <laughs> yeah. was really fucking cool what you did, Tomar. That was that was interesting. Sure. I liked that. Um, yeah, um, let's dole out some experience here. <laughs> I hope we'll get to put something in my bag. <laughs> Will There's someone give nothing. Pinwin something to put in the <laughs> fucking bag? <laughs> Holy <Order. laughs> shit! Okay, so for today's session for the battle and. Uh, and kind of how you guys were doing a lot of protection, protecting of a village that you were originally telling everybody to uh, get the fuck out of. You guys are each going to take 4,500 experience. Yeah. Oh, so close. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> Definitely more than halfway. Yeah. Uh, Tomar, I'm going to award some extra creativity. Um, uh experience to you you're going to take an additional uh 100 experience for the chain um disassembling and uh pretty much halting a uh, very very bad disastrous thing that was probably going to happen um and uh yeah so take that 100 experience points uh her stag you can have a, you can have uh, 100 as well for spending time to change the weather and still continually working on that. Now there's a, a fog that is rolling in and the <laughs> water, the rain is picking up. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Light flurries right now. In, <laughs> a, in a half hour, man, it's going to be <laughs> looking so different. Over right there. for you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, How much would it suck if like 
we kill everyone and then it just starts raining really heavy right after and we're <laughs> be just very like, my eighth, eighth, my eighth <laughs> what if it starts raining really too. hard and it just like dilutes that poison sludge and makes That'd it run cool. and drip even oh, faster no it wouldn't or maybe um, it just yeah goes water away. doesn't really do much out. to mm. yeah does anything do anything to help poison get better pinwin dirt <laughs> um Rub some dirt on it yeah for um shit i had it I'll just, I guess I can't remember Mantle what it was. Mantle of Inspiration, I've been there. Yeah, so you can have 50 for that. Gorble, for doing your um, a nice little hypnotic uh, pattern, you can have 100 experience for that um, and making just a clusterfuck happen. Willem, for firing your specialty arrow into that mass and making it real fucked up for everybody, you can have 100 experience. I also did Hail of Thorns. You can have 10 for that. <laughs> for doing an attack. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, what about for Pinwin for um, recalling Dragon Lore? That's what, sorry, that's what I was trying to think of. So for doing that, you can have an additional 100 experience cool. points because this is your favorite enemy. What about Smoozog just fucking killing stuff? Yeah. Smoozog being Smoozog and just wiping shit out? Well, it'll give it 50, 50 experience. Two of them crit, Willem and Hurst. At, I mean, Smoochie. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. You guys can have 25 each. I had a crit, too. Another thing. Oh, you I, did, yeah. yeah. Oh, when you did Hail of Thorns. Yeah. So that would be the 50 that you yeah, did. Yeah, that's fine. Another thing I realized, um, I was doing way less damage for his criticals. I'm supposed to roll two extra damage dice <laughs> for a critical um, for the barbarian thing. And one for uh, being a half orc. Oh yeah. So that would hmm. be a total of three D12s added on there. Well, Jeez. remember that for uh, next time. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, what else you guys God deserve damn. experience for? Uh, making a plan, uh, uh, like all of us splitting up and doing like making safe the city. Somehow, yeah. Somehow, when even though it's not very well, it's not advised for most groups to split. You guys don't seem to have an issue uh, with it. You guys all stay on task and stuff like that, which is good. So yeah, you guys, for being good at the game, you guys can each take an additional 50. <laughs> I mean, it, that's pretty much what it is. Like, staying on task is is difficult for some people uh, in groups. If it, if There's a lot of people that, if they're not doing anything, they're like on their phone, they're checking Facebook, and or just kind of staring off in the space. But you guys are on task, so it's good, yeah. What else? I think that probably covers it. Yeah, it pretty much covers it for the um, most part. G- but I will say, you guys can each have an additional 50 for try- making sure that Cork and the other two, you didn't abandon them. Mm-hmm. You guys went and f- and found them and sent them back. Saved Kojal. Yes, so that's an additional 50 for you I guys. feel like I'm just getting lumped into that group. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, did, I mean, you, you didn't there. argue against it, so. Yeah, well, and, and you bardic inspiration him. Yeah. And I give so, him oh, my yeah. short sword. Yeah. So you guys can each take another 25 for Sick. helping Cudgel um, make it back safely, hopefully. Sick. If you wasted that bardic inspiration. <laughs> he immediately no tripped boy. and fell on the short sword. <laughs> 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 um, okay. So is, is that time for the uh, MVPC? <clears throat> yes. All right, it's time for tonight's MVPC. So that is the Whee! most valuable player character. So take a moment and figure out who you're going to vote for. Once again, Tomar is one, Hersteg is two, Pinwin is three, Gorbel is four, and Willem is five. So in just a moment, I'll count to three, and you guys will vote. Sorry, do that one more time. I was thinking of something else. That's no, right. One, one two, two, three, three four, four, five. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yep. Shit, this one's hard. This is hard, but I've got it. I got it. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. So we've got two votes for Gorble, two votes for Tomar, and one vote for Willem. Sick. Gorble, why'd you vote for Willem? So it was really tough to choose between Tomar and Willem. Mm -hmm. But I went with Willem because I was, you know, with him the most Mm -hmm. and I got to see how fucking cool that was but I just think the sneakiness is really cool the magical arrows the crawling up walls (laughs) it was just cool yeah web web slinging Willem 
Um, <laughs> friendly neighborhood fall tell. Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with the tie there, um, Tomar, tell me why you voted for Gorbo. Gorbo. Uh, the hypnotic pattern really mm-hmm. displaced a lot of bad guys. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, her uh, Penwin. Wait, do you vote for Gorbel as well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why'd you vote for Gorbel? Um, yeah, same thing. Hypnotic pattern that was really effective. And then um, just kind of. Oh, like taking charge and being a good communicator. Cause she was letting us know the shit that was going down and didn't forget she had it or anything. Like, because, yeah, there's a lot going on. Good. Yeah, so that was good. First egg, why'd you vote for Tomar? Because of the chain link thing. That, yeah, was, that was cool. awesome. Yeah, that was so creative. Yeah, it was really cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. Same for you, Willem. Yeah. As soon as that shit happened, I was just like, just saved us all. Essentially <laughs> saved Moonreach, mm-hmm. possibly, from just being a blit of fucking rated, and that was a baller ass move. I feel like my vote could I mean I was so on the fence. No, we just I feel like it was less of a tie. It was like going to be Tomar. No, it's cool. Um, you guys, it's going to be a tie today. So Tomar <laughs> and Gorbel are tonight's MVPC. <laughs> you each take 250 experience points. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah. you could combine them together for 500 and give it to somebody else. That's not going to happen. No, I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> well, now that's a tie, he's going to beat me up. Bequeath, <laughs> Bequeath me. But yeah, um, that's it for uh, tonight's episode. Thanks for listening, folks. Um, Once again, Chad Piper with the intro song. Adrian Von Ziegler with the background music. Please check out and donate to our Patreon if you so choose. We would love to have you uh, as our patrons. Um, And then, of course, check us out at Gen Con. I almost said Gary Con. Check us out at Gen Con here, uh, August 1st through the 4th. Uh, we will be there. We will uh, we'll have some stickers, maybe, and uh, we'll have some something we can give you, even if it's just a high five. Um, and uh, so, yeah, if you're going to be at Gen Con, please come say hi. Don't, please, God, do not murder us. Um, I will cry. <laughs> Uh, But yeah, other than that, yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for uh, doing all that, folks. And uh, we'll see you next week on the D20 Syndicate podcast. I'm your host and DM, Seth. And this is where we go on adventures so you don't have to. I said that weird. Bye. (laughs) Bye. 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 I guess bye. Man born in the USA stuck in my head. <laughs> you need a burger that you gotta suck some of it oh, as you're eating weird. it. Weird. I like got a big <laughs> whiff of his coffee, and for some reason I thought it was bacon smell, and then I was really confused. You drinking bacon again? <laughs> we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> so did my doctor. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell him <laughs> the same thing same I'm thing telling I told you. you. You're not my real dad. <laughs> I don't care how many times you come over. Not even if there's a fire. (laughs) (laughs) Coffee smells good. Hot takes. (laughs) Hot takes, hot sips. Okay. Watch it on YouTube. Stare at that unmoving (laughs) symbol (laughs) on the YouTube video and check it out because there's some stuff, some cool shit in there. And uh, otherwise, you know, do your thing. Until you get to one hour, 37 minutes and 42 seconds into that episode. And it moves a little bit. Twitches. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> and then you'll, you'll, it. Do you'll that? miss it. You'll miss it if you if you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, at some Please. point there's gonna be a very faint fake picture of a butt that goes across the screen. <laughs> but it does but like the, yeah, it goes away. in the corners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta find that. And if it, point if in it the matches show. up perfectly, it farts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I really like the podcast, but th- what was that farting noise? <laughs> um see, and I was thinking like a little unicorn. <laughs> just goes across. That also farts. It also farts. Thank <laughs> also you. Yes. Farts. It's propelled and across the screen. And it farts away. Yeah. And there's like stars oh, and rainbows that shoot so up. What was that cute. robot unicorn attack? That video game? Yeah. Or that browser game from Adult Swim, which was super fun. I don't know. Is that Always what happened? Always I want to be with you. Are we sponsored? <gasps> oh, fuck. I'm sorry. That pinched the shit out of me. Oh. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was trying to. <laughs> I was worried. I thought you I was trying to close memory. this chapstick like really quietly under the table. <laughs> oh, and no. And then my fat little finger skin <laughs> got stuck in there. <laughs>
it seemed like you had just realized that the demon was coming. <laughs> <laughs> like you had forgot you made Guys, it. I gotta go. It's like it follows. Like, yeah. ah! It's here. <laughs> um. Elijah sticks in his lane and he doesn't veer. Do you want to try aloe juice? No. It's really good. <laughs> no. No. It's really Definitely. good. No, it isn't probably. Actually, it probably sounds like good. it tastes like lotion. No. Yeah. It that's tastes, what I think. It of. tastes like white grapes actually. Huh. Oh, that's pretty good. But some of it has pulp in it, so kind of like these oh. gooey Soft little bits, which I really like. Not I everybody try likes it. Aloe juice? Are you like what? Were, what was that drink Aloe? that was that came out? Orbits. Around? Orbits. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's uh, you nailed yeah. it. It was awesome. And then they kids kept choking or they. How sang. do you choke on an orbit? I don't know. What's don't that? Know. It, it, was, it was like a drink, kind of like when Sobe. Do you remember Sobe? Yeah. I think Sobe might still be a thing. Probably. It's kind of like Sobe, but they had little like gel beads. Gel the, beads. Yeah. Why? In the water, I have no idea. It, it, they were clear drinks so as well, like boba? And, so the, and they were like, yeah, kind of like that, but they Mini, were like bright, like very tiny, bright oh. colored little beads <laughs> yeah, in there stupid. that were like jelly. They're like the size of the ice cream. Yeah, oh the, my God. at the it, theater, it, it was that, bath yeah. salts. Oh, <laughs> they had little bath salts. That in the water. That sounds like the dumbest thing ever. It was, it was fun. It was but, fun. Little but as children, yeah, it was just bigger. like Ooh, fun. They were for kids, though. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and you get it, and you shake it up and watch them. Like, it's like a snow so globe a that you can hazard. drink. I feel like they'd be more of a choking hazard if they were bigger. Just put some fucking gushers in your water. <laughs> there you go. What are you asking a card for, Billy? Just something. What is it? Something. Tell us, Billy. We... So we rolled for everybody's dick size at one point, and I just want a, a chart for reference again. It's negative three. I was thinking three. of doing something. It's, negative, it's inverted. Yeah. I, I literally had it's your card, concave. and I have and no any. idea where it went, because I looked at it at the start of this session. What if That's pen went? I don't remember if it was on there. Shouldn't, we shouldn't do this stuff in cards. Just make a Google Doc and share it with them or something. Well, yeah, but it this was, is... It was from long ago. Yes. Yeah, before very before, before computers? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pretty, before we were using it. Yeah. It was word processors. It was a word processor. I typed it on a typewriter. A typewriter, I'm, and I sent it to <laughs> Hercule Poirot. Um, basically, if you want to look up the different types that there that currently exist, okay, I'll say that you know there there were five. So okay, okay, sorry. So you can use that as a reference right tool. On. Okay, okay. I didn't mean to deter. No, it's cool. So it's it's better to know than not know. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I did find is all the names of the kids from the town from like the second mm, campaign nice. or the second session, um, mm. and I was pretty close on some of them. <laughs> um, 